Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I understand that for many people this has been a long, hard winter, and spring may have been having a hard time getting started. So let's help it along a little bit. Purchase this little solar-powered little dancing flower. I like it, but it's a little bit cheesy with this plastic base that it's on there. But I'm a wood turner. So I'll grab a piece of wood left over from last week's project. This happens to be segmented, but it could be end grain or, or uh, cross grain, whatever piece of wood you have. And let's dress this flower up so that we can have a little hint of spring to remind us of what can be. So let's make a dancing flower. I had a stack of four oak segment rings not used as last week's project got scaled back. It was about the right size, so I grabbed it. It could have been any appropriately sized block of wood. It's a bit too tall, so my first task after rounding the top ring is to part off most of the top ring. I'll use it sometime, somewhere. I started with a small spindle gouge, too small, and switched to a larger gouge. I had already hollowed it somewhat for the other project. Now I need to size it to the solar spring flower. I'll transfer the size of the base to the timber, being careful to let only one leg touch the wood. I'll hollow with my square carbide, although it is not ideal due to the large bar under the cutter. I have to stay quite high above center on the timber to avoid having the bar rub the wood and prevent cutting. Once I got it deep enough, I just need to widen the opening for the taper of the flower's base. I'll sand and finish the interior now, in case I cannot get back to it later. Now for the outside of this little cup. I have it mounted in a chuck, although I'd rather it be on a faceplate. With the chuck, I'll not be able to turn the bottom portion at this time. I'll keep the design here very simple. The taper will match that of the flower base. I'll end with some sheer scraping. I love the very fine shavings that come from it. I'll sand and finish the upper portion of the exterior and see if I can match the shape coming from the bottom. For the bottom half, I'll wrap the top with three or four layers of masking tape to cushion it as I reverse it into the jaws of the chuck. I'm surprised at how well it's centered. I'm protecting the wood from being indented by putting a penny between the wood and the point of the tailstock. Poor Mr. Lincoln now has a dent. Then tool off the excess from the bottom half of the exterior. I thought about trying to reduce the thickness of the bottom now, but decided against it. I need to rescue Mr. Lincoln. Instead, I'll sand and finish the bottom half of the exterior except the base. Now I'll go for the base with a freshly honed spindle gouge with very light cuts. The last thing I want is to make a funnel instead of a cup. I'll dish it out, then switch to a skew to define the inner boundary of the outer edge and the inset plug in the base. There's always a change to be felt going from the segmented ring to the plug surface because of grain direction. A little groove here acknowledges the change. A little more sanding and finishing with beeswax and mineral oil and I'm done. Now I have a nice little reminder of spring and its beauty. With a little more light, it will dance for me. A nice gift for anyone who's a bit weary of winter. A quick and easy project suitable for segmented, end grain, and cross grain turning projects. 
please click the like button on this video and subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield unless your eyebrows can hide that new scar. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.